Welcome back to AWS Tidbits, your monthly digest of all things AWS, particularly for DevOps, for June 2023. So first up, we're going to talk about security, particularly AWS Security Lake, which is going to centralize all your security findings and the Fault Injection Simulator. I did not make that up, which expands into more actions with EKS and ECS. We are also going to talk about some new, well, a new encryption option for S3 as well as a new way to connect to private EC2 instances. Next, we're gonna introduce you to two free workshops that you can do on your own. One of them is on Lambda and Serverless Espresso, and the other one's on the Cloud Development Kit. Lambda, as you know, is basically serverless functions on AWS, while the CDK, the Cloud Development Kit, is the code to infrastructure conversion tool for AWS. Last, we are going to show you a way to deploy large language models similar to ChatGPT onto and using AWS. Before we get into it, hit subscribe, hit that like button, you know, let us know, give us feedback in the comments, right? Let's move on. All right, here we are, it's June, 2023. We're here with Keeping Up With AWS, doing a little AWS tidbits. Let's roll into this. Okay, so Security Lake is now available for everyone. This is gonna automatically centralize data and security findings from CloudTrail, you know, inspector, guard duty, into basically multiple sources. And by the way, they can be third-party sources into a purpose-built data lake stored into your account for easier analysis. So this is available now, generally available. So I would look at this, especially if you need to centralize all your findings and everything into one area, single pane of glass, same timeline, see everything, super nice. Next. New actions on AWS Fault Injection Simulator, so I alluded to this in the intro, is that Fault Injection Simulator now supports injecting experiments, so failure experiments, into your ECS and your EKS clusters, whether they're Fargate or EC2, doesn't matter. So if you wanna test your containerization to see if it's resilient, how does it respond to failure? You wanna create some experiments there, this is the way to do it. Number three, if you want to learn Lambda, which is AWS serverless. So remember, there's three ways to host applications. There's virtual machines, there's containers, and there's event-driven architecture using serverless. If you want to learn event-driven architectures and serverless, you want to use Lambda, for example, there is a um, serverless Espresso workshop that's actually been around for a while, but it's kind of come back into popularity. It's great for learning Lambda functions and for event-driven architecture. Number four, AWS Signer and the Amazon Elastic Container Registry, which is a container registry that you can run on AWS, Signer and the ECR, the registry, now work together to validate that only the container images that you have approved are deployed into your registry, meaning you have to sign them in order for them to show up in the registry. So great little security feature there because it prevents any kind of malicious injection of container images into your container registry that you don't want in your registry. So that way your company can approve them. So that's number four. Number five is that, you know, we've got a variety of ways to connect from our, you know, client machines into our EC2 virtual machines. So, you know, SSH, RDP, that kind of thing. Well, guess what? Now Amazon, number five, has a new EC2 connect endpoint, kind of similar to the function endpoints they added to Lambda, which means you can now get to your private, not publicly exposed EC2 virtual machines just through SSH accessing a single endpoint. So think of this as a private mini proxy that you can use to SSH into your system and get right over into your EC2 boxes and you don't have to set up bastion hosts you don't have to set them out to the public internet. You don't have to install Systems Manager, right? You don't have to use Teleport or any of the other proxies that you would use for that. You don't have to use an SSH proxy, like a Bastion host or whatever. So that's number five, is that now they're making it incredibly easy for you to just get connected to your private instances in a controlled manner. Number six. So S3 has had single encryption for a while, right? You can use the native tool for S3. You could actually use the what's called the key management service to encrypt. Well, what if you need double encryption and you need a cipher other than you know the AES-256, which is standard? Well, now S3 now has new algorithms that you can use for double encryption. 
So you can actually double encrypt your S3 objects if your security requirements need it. Now that's probably for the most stringent of environments and most of us won't need that, but it is a good option to know and have. It's called DSSE, by the way, KM, uh, KMS, which is basically just double server-side encryption. Number seven. So now we've got the AWS Cloud Development Kit Workshop. So the CDK, this the Cloud Development Kit, which is the way in AWS by which you get from code to creating infrastructure. So you type something out in Python, you type something out in Java, you type something out in JavaScript, and you define these objects using these importable libraries. And then what happens is the CDK converts that into CloudFormation and basically executes that, like runs it out on AWS. So the Cloud Development Kit is fairly popular, pretty well known, because most of us go for Terraform for that kind of thing. But if you want to write in native code and you just want to have it to be converted, the CDK workshop is a great place to explore that. So that's number seven is the CDK workshop. Been around for a minute, but updated all the time. So I would go run that in your own account and experiment with that if you want to learn more about how to use your native programming tool to get into infrastructure. Last, but certainly not least, is number eight, where you can deploy a large language model like ChatGPT into AWS, and so you can create your own serverless machine learning inference endpoint, which is basically an accessible endpoint where you say, put inputs in and say, I want to get an output. So kind of like submitting a prompt, right? And then it uses fast API, it uses Lambda, and it uses the CDK to generate the infrastructure necessary for you to submit prompts, train it, and then basically use it. So those are the eight major releases that we saw that were DevOps related for June of 2023. My name is Michael Forrester. It's great to see you. Don't forget to hit the subscribe and like buttons and leave us comments below for other things you'd like to see. Thank you.